Sorry for you. You killed my best friend. Shot him down like a dog out there in the field. Like a dog. You never gave him a chance. My best friend, do you hear? My best friend. talk all you want. Personally, I'll take a barrel of beer. Well, you can have your barrel of beer, brother. Personally, I'm going to get married when this war's over to the sweetest little gal in West Virginia. Ah, you're off your nut, bits. Hey, but Mr. Vermillion. Yeah, Jim? Uh, me and Vic here, we got... <laughs> yeah, I heard you. You know, it, it seems to me that's all you guys ever talk about. Mr. Vermillion, you're a correspondent for the United Press, aren't you? That's right. Uh, now, come on, now, who's right? Me or Vic, huh? Well, I... I'd, I'd say you're both right. Hey, what do you but, mean? We both can be right. I sure you can. Get married and have your beer, too. Ah, now that's oh, not that what I mean. Right. Hey, get down, fellas. Get down. German mortars put a temporary end to that argument. We were standing on a crag at Artina, at the tip of an American salient, pointed at the German defense line on the road to Rome. Below us was a quiet valley scented with locust blossoms and poppies. At night, it sparked with fireflies. But in a matter of seconds, it became a roaring battlefield where men were bleeding and dying. Come on, let's get out of here. You said it, brother. Well, where are we going? We're going down that briar gully into that house there. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, Mr. Vermillion. Come on, fellas, let's go. Keep down there. made the dash down the gully across a hundred yards of open road into the house while shells burst on buildings to our right. There we found six soldiers waiting for the barrage to stop. From the house we watched the beginning of the battle toward Valmontone on the road to Rome. Boy, I'm glad to be out of that. Are you all right, Mr. Vermillion? Yeah, just out of breath, that's all. <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Mind if we join you? Not at all. <laughs> hey! Fellas, what's that? That's our artillery opening up on the Jerry's over there in those houses. See? Boy, listen to those babies. Hey, you know, they tell me on a clear day you can see Rome from here. <laughs> I'd like to see it myself, but not from here. Right, Mr. Vermillion? Wouldn't even be surprised if you didn't do that one of these days. Hey, get down, fellas, get down! I wonder where we're going after Rome. Oh, my hope. Oh, Rome to home. That... That's me. What are you yelling for? It's all over, boys. Well, guess where we move up again. Come on, Vic. Another day, another Jerry. Here we okay. go again. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jim and Vic were the first out, with the six Yanks in the house veering off to the right. From all indications, it appeared that the Germans in the houses across the field had been knocked out. As my two friends advanced... I saw other troops getting ready to crawl out of the ditches to follow them. Suddenly, from one of the houses ahead, a German machine gun cut loose on the six Yanks to the right of Vic and Jim. As they fell, two threw up their hands. The other four just crumpled and lay still. Get down, Vic! Get Jim. down! Jim, we've got to do something about that typewriter. How many grenades are you carry? Two. How many you got? One. I used up the rest dog gone. Well... Is enough to take care of that baby. Here, let me have him. What do you mean, let Now, listen, have... dope. Somebody's got a cover. Now, come on, give him to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Here. There. Okay. Now, look. Yeah. 
I'm going around to the side, and you keep your eyes open. Down, Vic. All right. Get down. I'm turning now. Look, now's your chance. Go ahead. I'll cover you, boy. Okay. So long, kid. So long, Vic. Easy, Vic. Easy. Oh, Lord, take care of Vic. Take care of him, won't you? Don't let him get killed. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Oh, God. He... No. No, they missed him. They missed him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Keep going, boy. Keep going. He's going to run for it. Vic! Vic, run! Run, boy! Run! Run! Vic! Oh. Vic. Vic fell. Fell just as he was within throwing distance of the enemy machine gun. When Jim saw his comrade fall, he sneaked his way inch by inch through the red poppies and locust blossoms to the body of his pal and removed the three grenades from his pockets. Then he turned his attention to the job at hand. Don't worry, Vic. I'll get him. I'll get him if it's the last thing I ever do. Huh? Missed again, huh? Now let's see how you like this. <laughs> and this. And this. From my lookout, I watched Jim hurl the grenades one after another in quick succession. The next moment, he dove into a window of the enemy-occupied house. Nobody here. Must be in the next room. Ah, oh, cripes, what a floor. Door's shut. Well, here goes. Up with your hands, Cloud, and keep them up. You understand me? I understand English perfectly, Herr Clyde. That's just dandy. Where's the rest of your pals? Pals? Yeah, pals, buddies, men. Where are they? Oh, see for yourself. They're dead. Ah. Oh. Just three of you, huh? Yes. Okay. You and me are going back to my... <laughs> I'm afraid we're not going anywhere. At least not for the moment. i got plenty of time. I'm afraid you're wrong again. Say, listen to me. I'm you gonna... see, what you heard is the German artillery barrage. And that means counterattack. Go on, what are you talking I'm about? I'm simply you? telling you we are caught between two fires, my friend. Don't you friend me? You killed my buddy, you dirty swine. Very well, you... Herr Pilot. It was either kill or be killed. I had no choice. Shut him down like a dog. All right, you American swine. <laughs> Should have searched the dirty crowd. Down here, got myself killed. Uh, I. Uh, ah, it's your own fault, buddy. Where did I get you? Uh, 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 yeah, let's take a look. Uh, stomach, huh? Got a first aid kit around here? Private Jim McGaw found himself in a curious, you might say almost a macabre predicament. Alone with two dead Germans and a third who was dying, trapped in the crossfire of American and German artillery. The blast from a gun was followed a split second later by the whistle of the shell and the explosion. Jim watched houses crumbling in the town, which he knew held shivering citizens in their own barren rooms, rooms as barren as his. The only difference was that Jim had company. Dead company. What... What time is it? I don't know. Close to midnight, I guess. Here, Private P. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want? Arthur. 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 Stop it, will you? Stop it! Why don't you die? Give me your Arthur, please. I've given you all my water, I tell you. You think I'd like to listen to you dying, do you? Do you? Oh, why should I feel sorry for you? You killed my best friend. Shot him down like a dog out there in the field, like a dog. He never had a chance. My best friend, do you hear? Do you hear? Arthur. Arthur. I... Come. Come. What are you trying to tell me? I... Closer. Please. Closer. I can't get any closer. Oh, why, you dirty swine. <laughs> dirty. Nazi rat. That's the last rotten trick. You'll play. Vic, 
Big. Yeah, Chief. We did it, didn't we, boy? Sure we did. You, you know something? What's that? Yes, I'm not going to get that barrel of beer after all. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Jim. I guess I'm not going to get married. Yeah, they... But they can't say we didn't try. They can't say we didn't... So two pals who lived in peace and war on the road to Rome lived again in death. It would be unthinkable at this moment that men of all nations fighting and working together for freedom should ever allow themselves to forget men like Jim and Vic. As they died trying because they knew that it is only a victorious allied army that will restore the world. A world where human beings can live in decency and peace and happiness with their fellow men. Press. 